Thank you very much. Your attention, please. Um, just to give a few directives. There's a washroom outside, so when you exit either through here or through the other door, you move to your right. It's immediately after this. So you will see it properly labeled. It's a gentleman first before the ladies. So washroom is right outside to your right. It's properly labeled gentlemen and ladies. So if you want to ease yourself, you can do that. There's also a photography stand properly made. This time we want to capture as many pictures and memories as possible. So if you haven't taken time to take photographs, we will kindly indulge you to do so, so that we can add, we can all record that you were here some. Yeah. All right. We'll start pretty shortly. I'll get the signal and we'll get started. But I want to say thank you for coming early and coming on time, most of you. I'm very proud that we are timekeepers. So we'll start uh, shortly. All this is part of the first hour of the program for us to network, socialize, see what's on exhibition, and as well, take a lot of photos and have some interviews. The video people are setting up. We'll be interviewing most of you one-on-one -on -one so that we can recap some of the beautiful moments you shared that we didn't see. Uh, especially my, when I look at the people I'm seeing, I know that <laughs> there's a lot I missed. And I, so I want, to, I, I want to have a taste of what you experience through your stories. So please, when the cameras come over, please share your beautiful experiences with us. I want to know why that place is called Appian Way. Uh, if those of you have the history, you let us know. All right, so thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Isaac Jahini. I'll be with you for a while. Thank you.
beside you. If you think there is somebody beside you, it's killing your soul, destroying your heart. It's killing your soul, destroying your heart. You are number one. If you think there is somebody beside you. Somebody beside you is killing your soul, destroying your heart. Is killing your soul, destroying your heart. You are number one. <laughs> It's a mommy, 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 it's
Mauli, so here we. Mauli, so here we. Until this hall vibrates, we are not here. Mauli, so here we. Mauli, so here we. We are coming. We are coming. We are coming. Mauli, so here we. We are almost there. <laughs> it's like we are at a where right about now. <laughs> okay, let's take it again. Mauli, so here we. Mm, post office. We are almost there. We are almost there. Now, I want us to enter the gates with a lot of vim and vigor. Mauli, so here we. Thank you very much. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. This afternoon, the skies are all painted green and yellow, all in the name of the head, the heart, and the hand. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's 6th of March, the very well-anticipated public lecture held by Maoli School Old Students has come. My name is Isaac Jahine, Omsu 2000. Please don't look at me with that eye. You tell me the view me nya me nya. Yeah. Akpana mi ba me nya ba the view me nya. Me already tell me how me lilo akpana me. So I'll be your moderator for today, and I humbly ask that you give me all the cooperation you can give me so that I can steer this affair to a very beautiful end. Once again, a very big round of applause to everybody who is here. <laughs> On this note, we want to invite all those still taking photographs outside to kindly join us in. We are about starting. And let me quickly say that I am impressed that we are witnessing today. We've done a very big job. So once again, a big round of applause to everybody here. With the permission of the president, who is the head of this organizing committee, we want to start. Thank you very much, sir. In our midst is Reverend Kennedy Achu. If you are here, kindly give me a wave. All right. Reverend is coming to do a very important function for us. He is the one to lead the opening prayer. And I'm sure... We are ready. Put your hands together for Reverend Kennedy Achu. Reverend. Thank you very much. We want to pray. Father, we are grateful unto you for such a time like this. We thank you for bringing us from far and near to gather here in peace. We are here as a family. As your word says, we should never remove the ancient landmarks. We are here not to remove it, but to strengthen it. We pray that your spirit will lead us, will guide us, that the purpose for which we have gathered here for will be accomplished to the glory of your name. We commit all the facilitators on this program into your hands. 
We ask that your spirit will lead each and every one of us. That we'll do all that we can to bring this August meeting and gathering to a successful end. To the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Whilst we were in school, between 1998 and 2000, yes, 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 I heard that, yes, 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 yes. Today, if you don't take time, I'll be very intimidated. <laughs> Okay, so our chaplain was Reverend Kojokuma. Uh, I don't know if some of you already know him. We, as students, as I then felt like that man was not cut for school. He should have been in a parish somewhere and, and sort himself out. Because I think he didn't have that space for students' misbehavior, in quotes. So one day, our senior housemaster, who we call warm up, Reverend uh, Mr. Keteku, had come to give an announcement. <laughs> so one person would do it, another would do it. So it, like, it just resounds like that. So anytime he gives an announcement, he's going, the whole hall goes like that. And this man has kept advising us that we sound like dogs if you do that. <laughs> yes. Then senior housemaster comes to give an announcement. Immediately he steps down, the whole hall goes louder. <laughs> With the very thing we were asked not to do. And you could see that this man was just not ready for us. Some of the prayers he said, if I say some here, you will be marveled. Heavenly Father, though these ones are young and foolish. By the time he's done with the prayer, nobody will say amen because we all felt insulted. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a great time in that period. I'm sure your time was much greater and your experience was more beautiful than mine. But I'll be very interested to share. So as much as possible, any of us that come up, if you have a little story that you want to share with us, we want to fill in. Thank you so much. We would quickly rise and take the school's anthem and formally begin. Okay, I need a problem. All right. One of the ladies with a very good voice to give us the tune. Can you rise to your feet, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. Any lady with a very beautiful voice? Okay. Uh, okay. They've passed the baton to the gentleman. <laughs> what ladies can do with, with a man, with a man, we are not fighting for it. <laughs> All right, sir. I go. Hail, hail, Mahuli. Yes, yeah. Ready? Go. Hail, hail, Mahuli. Look from strand to strand.
Mauli so here we. Mauli so here we. Baba Mauli so here we. Mi fo kondo ma se mi fo kondo ma se mi fo kondo ma se. Eh. Mi e cho vota tu tu tu. Anyansa le mi asi. Jinyanu le mi asi. Akuvia me le mi amo. Aye. A big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Kindly take your seat. Truly, we are the great products of Marley School. Wherever we find ourselves, we have excelled in whatever we do. And so today, we are proud to unite our forces and to say something to ourselves as old students. Looking back at what the founding fathers were thinking, some maybe more than 50 years ago or something. I don't know how, when they started thinking about this, but close to 50 or more, more than 70 years since they started putting this together. Today we are here. We just want to revisit that and put the future in perspective, looking at where we came from. Once again, thank you all for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, I will introduce a few of our dignitaries for today. The most very, the very important dignitary we have here today is yourself. So you want to acknowledge yourself and put hands together for yourselves for coming. <laughs> that among the thousands and thousands of old students who Molly have produced, when we called you were the VIP who showed up. God bless you. And to once again, clap for yourselves for coming. Okay. Um, we want to invite a few others to join our um, high table. Ambassador Bebaku Mensa. You are comfortable there. If you look at the way the ambassador was giving me the signal, no tsunami shall move ambassador. Ambassador, we shall respect your decision to stay there. Okay. Then, Honorable Ruby Avotri. Avotri, if you are here, kindly join the high table for us. Okay. Okay. Then we also have Nana Boache Mensa. Oyoko Hini of Rara Traditional Area. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, Nana also insists that he wants to stay beside the ambassador so they can keep each other company. And I'm sure you know why. They have some old conversation you need to catch up with. And so, ah, did you hear that? He was his, but now was his baba when they were in school, eh? <laughs> so, so the conversation goes way back. If they are here, they can't catch some of the, you can, you'll be watching their lips. So let's permit them. So, our uh, seniors, you are permitted to be where you are and respect your decision. We call our very honorable. Honorable Ekwia Dansua, who is with us, a very proud woman as well. Hey. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. She also insists that <laughs> she is with her mother. All right, so Mr. President, from the way the trend is going, we have to stop here. All. <laughs> okay. So we'll continue. I'm sure that if I call you next, you tell me, baby, I'll tell you why about. If you're not going to go, okay. Okay. So we would call Dr. Of George Ofori, who is one of the very active old students we have alive. Everywhere I go, I meet this gentleman. 
If he's here, I can't see him. Hey, the boys are at the back. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dr. Joe Fofori. Himself, a former OMSU president. I remember during the 50th anniversary, he was the OMSU president. I was chief of staff then, and we had a lot to do to make the anniversary beautiful. Once again, put your hands together for Dr. Joe Fofori. He's here to introduce the chairperson for today. Oh, were you clapping? He didn't hear. Yeah, this is the George Ufuri. You're all welcome. I think they've already done that. I'm here to introduce uh, the chairman, chairperson. Incidentally, I must say honestly that I feel very, very honored to be selected and chosen to do this job. Because I am to introduce somebody who has been a long time friend, real, real long time friend. And uh, they say they are giving me 25 minutes to do that. <laughs> So, I'm here to introduce our chairperson, who has a lot and lots of credentials, and I'll only give you a few. The first and foremost, and very important to Maoli school, is he's a theologian, theologian, Usofu, a very high level theologian. And that means he preaches both the Old and the New Testament, and he believes in them. Zofu. And he's an expert in leadership and uh, good governance. Expert. The school character to understand leadership. I don't know if he's to be giving advice to those who are governing us. Yes. He's also a consultant in uh, organizational development. Consultant. And Ms. the chairperson belongs to many many organizations, including one, Rotary. And I'll be happy and proud enough to say that uh, he invited me to a number of those day, lunch. Uh, you know, they always buy food, and when they go after the food, they contribute money, plenty. The chairperson invited me to a couple of those, and I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't contribute anyway. <laughs> He's also a member of the Airport Toastmasters Club. When I heard of that, I was wondering, do they toast with wine or with what? Our chairperson is uh, uh, he's going to show us the wine. He's a member of the Airport Toastmasters Club. And linked with that is the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. I mean, that group is uh, more commonly known, FGBI, whatever it is. He's also a certified project management professional. IT related, it means that uh, just give me his project, you handle it for you. And in that, our chairman to be is an ICT expert and economist. And that brought the two of us still closer. Our chairperson was the main director of uh, NCR Ghana Limited for a good number of years. I don't know if the young ones knew about that. He was the MD for this. And at that time, I was the head of IT in uh, one Gajarupe. So we worked regarding IT. He was the IT head in NCI and I was the IT head in uh, Manfor Housing. And it was good. Really good. At the national level, our chairperson is a member of uh, the Trade Procurement Evaluation Board currently. Which is a big job. A big one that uh, uh, if you do something and the procurement and those sort of things, you look into it. Now, coming to our OMSU level, 
our chairman to be is a senior, real senior, that I was not even qualified to fetch water for in Maoli school. What does that mean? It means he even finished, left Maoli school before I sat for common entrance. So I wasn't qualified to be a for one boy to fetch water for him. And this man left Maoli school recently in 1964. Yes, recently, just 1964. And unfortunately for him, instead of being put in Lincoln House, he was put in Wilberforce. Wow. <laughs> Later on, he realized that uh, there's only one house in Maori School, which is Lincoln House. The rest are accommod <laughs> yes, the rest are accommodation. Yes. So if you were not in Lincoln House, one hour daughter if you had to go to go and sleep. <laughs> After phone five, this that time he was a young man, his results were all written on his face. So one time he went to visit a friend on uh, some school compound. I won't call the school as Prep College. So while visiting the friend, then the headmaster saw him. You must be a good student. Come to my school for sixth form. So our chairman was poached from early school to that school. Is that school? I don't know the name. Of sixth form. So he spent his sixth form there, and after that, he went abroad and did his degrees. Okay. But despite all that. He hasn't left Mali school behind. He has been home school president. In fact, at least two times for many years. He has been a board member. Mali school board, I mean. And uh, while Osofo, he even had a number of uh, preaching, someone preaching for the students. You go and tell them all sorts of things. And even... He left a pulpit there. He died in Mali school, Osofu's pulpit. To let them know that Osofu uli aka bubuogali. Then this man, when he even comes to the aspect of marriage, he didn't forget Mali. I hope you understand me. <laughs> even in marriage, he didn't forget Mali. What I couldn't trace is how much he patronized Maoli school at Piawe. That one I don't know. But I know that uh, he didn't forget Maolians when he came to marriage. He has been my personal role model. Seriously role model because when he was president for that time, I was his vice. And one thing about him was that anytime he saw that I was talking too much, which I don't think I'm doing now, my role model will say, Georgie, the Nagadek blogger. Are you going to say more Nagadek blogger? Then I know that uh, I've said enough. And on that note, having said enough, I want to introduce my senior and friend, Reverend Moses Tete, to be in our chair for us. Thank you. Have you, yeah, have you, have you, yeah, have you, have you, yeah, have you, have you,
This is the day of the Lord. So we shall rejoice. We shall be glad and rejoice in it. Yes. Today, 66 years ago, our country was born. So they are 66 years old. But we know something. Maori was born even before that. Yes, because we are, we are 74. We are getting ready to celebrate the 75th. Yes. So we were born way before Osajefo said, yeah? Osajefo said, Ghana, my beloved country, <laughs> is free forever. <laughs> Long before he said that, we were already born. We were already in circulation and our products are all over the place so we thank god for this great school and some of us were even luckier or more blessed because i saw what i trust myself you know what i trust the man who came to found that school he traveled to keta and conducted the interview myself and two other people and he selected us to come to Maoli School. Ah, <laughs> amazing, amazing. So when I went there, I went in the spirit. You see, now you made a big man here myself. You was a big chap, huh? You had a big American accent. <laughs> so, so I went there in the spirit. And that's what made me who I am. Because that school formed me in the right direction. The second phase was... The people we are honoring today, Dan Kodote and Agbesi. I disappeared, I actually worked with. We went to Legon, we went to Kumasi, we went to Cape Coast, we went to Tak, everywhere with them. And the passion of these people was just amazing, fantastic. Nothing could deter them to spend money on their own to do many things and to take a car from KNUSC and come to Maoli School and sleep in the dormitories. Is that also? <laughs> Correct. Yes. They will sleep in the dormitories and they will have their bath in the bathrooms because they wanted them to see what a university student looked like. And they felt it. No wonder for some time KNUSD was full of Maolians. Medical school, Maolians. All over the place. And now there are plenty of them in a diaspora. What we are doing today is very important. When I was president, we did one, one. I think John is here, John Chitobo and I. He was my secretary at the time. And we had this celebration. At that time, they were alive. It was very good. I think we did it at Tema. Today, we are relaunching it. Then I said, we are relaunching it. And I want to say that let us sustain it. Because, also, George is very modest. <laughs> George didn't want to name the school. I, my other school, where I went to the sixth form. Okay. <laughs> and when I went there, I did very well. And I came back. And we became, now I'm the life president of the Greater Accra Association of that school. <laughs> you see, oh, from the border region, from Keta, then who? Then to Kumasi, then I became life president. Yes. The second thing I did was to launch what we are doing now over there the ceremonial and memorial lectures. And we just had one in November, the 24th one. That means that we did it every year, consistently, consistently, 24. So, you see how far you have to catch up, President, you see? You have so much gap to catch up. Me, I'm there, or you come to me, I'll help you do it. Pe -pe -pe -pe. I just want to say that I'm so glad to be here today. And I've seen a lot of my very good friends, old friends, Fred Boachi. Fred Boachi used to run 100 meters. Wow. <laughs> yes, Fred, let me see you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and they used to compete with Kwame Ato. Kwame Ato. 
Kwame Yato was the opposite of Fred Wachi. Fred Wachi is very tall. Kwame Yato was strong. Well, they, they will compete. Eh? 100 meters. Eh? Fantastic. Yes, I'm glad to see a lot of my old friends who are full of passion because I see them here because they want to be here. That's very, that's very good. So I want to say that let us sustain this. The easiest way is to sustain it is to rotate it from Accra, Kumasi, every, uh, Accra to who? One year, one year, one. That way you don't lose any portion of it. I'll be willing to assist in that direction. Before I said, when I came, I sat with uh, Fred. Uh, Senior Fred, I should say. <laughs> Fred, Fred has written a book. Can I see the book? Can you pass the book up? He has written a book about... Uh, He's written a book about the advent of education in the Volta region, and Chito in particular. This is a title, A Community in Search of Education, Chito, 1886 to 1963. Everybody should write a book, don't you think so? Yes. Sometimes a man is speaker of the assembly, and he doesn't write a book. So you don't know what he did. We had pandemic, we had COVID. Nobody has given us a book on those things. So when the children grow up saying, Daddy, I hear you were in a pandemic. What do you do? do? <laughs> There's no book. There's no book. We don't even have a certified book on the history of Maoli school. Yeah? Why don't you charge Fred to write a book? Fred, can you write us a book? Hey, thank you very much. Okay. So I want to thank you for coming. We have a prominent member, daughter of our school here with us, which is very good. He knows the inside of everything. So he'll be talking to us later. And I believe that will be the, the real profile, the real apex of what we are going to do today. So I want to say that Today we are about to launch something. And the president has been to my house several times and I met him. He's a nice person. And he's committed. And many of us are committed. So let us move forward and do it again. Can we do it again? Yes. yes. Let's do it again. Yes. Okay. So let's close. Have you yeah. Please, please, let's go. Have you, yeah, have you, have you, yeah, have you, 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 Thank you so much, Reverend Moses Tete, our chairperson for today. We want to acknowledge some dignitaries here present. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very happy to have in our midst some relatives and close family of our two heroes, Nelson Agbesi and Daniel Sidney Budote. So we we'll acknowledge them accordingly. In our midst is Naya Agbesi. That is um, Nelson Agbesi's wife. Wow. 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 Beautiful. Mom, you are welcome. I want to personally give you a handshake after here. We'll take a picture. All right. Thank you. She didn't come alone. She came with others as well. Uh, she also came with Kweku M. Agbesi, son of Nelson Agbesi. Kweku, who are you? Thank you. Kweku, let me see your face and see your dad's face. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your, your father fired up. You didn't hear that, did you? All right. So, they are also in the company of Kofi Mawunyo Agbesi, another son. 
Thank you so much. Also in their company is Cypran Nyagbo. Cypran Nyagbo, uh -huh. uncle of Nelson Nagbesi. Also here is Yao Nutifafa Agbesi. He's also a son. Thank you so much and welcome. Also here is John Yao Agbeko, nephew of, okay. Great, I'm going through the Agbesi list. Um, okay, I'm not sure. Okay. Is there any other person from the Agbesi family who have not recognized if you are here? Oh, kindly give us a big wave. Okay, all other members of the Agbesi family, just give us a wave. All right, all right, all right, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, kindly rise to your feet. Let's see something. We just, Molly boys are just like that. Let's see something. Uh, just kindly rise. Molly boys there, you know. Uh, Abby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just for the boys, oh. Uh, <laughs> just for the boys. All right. Also, in our midst, our family and close relatives of um, our hero, Podote. So we would recognize Caroline Podote, who is a daughter of a uh, celebrant. Oh, she's cute. Did you see her? Caroline, please. Do us the honor. Wow. That's beautiful. Welcome, Caroline. OK, also here is Nelson Podote. Nelson Podote, thank you. He's also a brother of Okay. Um, also here from the Podote family. Mm. Okay. Is there anybody else here from the Podote family who I have not acknowledged? Yes. Kindly rise to your feet. Nice gentleman at the back. Okay. Okay. And by extension, we are all family members. Extended family. Oh, Mr. Kodete was one of my seniors senior. That's, that's enough. <laughs> all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, want to say a very big welcome to all the family who are here in honor of their very own who paved the way for us to be here this afternoon. So, thank you so much for coming and responding to our invitation. Also here, we've already introduced Nana already. Nana, kindly give us another wave. Yeah. Kindly give us another wave. Okay, all right. So that is Nana Bwachi Mensang, Oyoko Hine of Rara Traditional Area. Nana, we are proud of you. Okay, Nana, please, I want to take a picture with you before you go, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. We would invite the president of OMSU, who is very new in office. I thought you were clapping for that. <laughs> <laughs> Those days, they used to call him Chief Butelezi. And he has to explain today where from that name. <laughs> All right. We'll call him here to do a very important function by introducing to us his team that were elected not too long ago and the spirit behind this. Thank you so much. Please welcome your president. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming here today. It is a great honor to us. Uh, your presence here means a lot to us, and we are very grateful. We are going to move the program right along. Um, Mr. Vice President, said Salam Yamadi. Okay, so we'll jump this step because most of the executives are busy taking care of other business. Uh, we'll get a time to meet them at appropriate time. So let's move right into the welcome address. Mr. Chairman, Distinguished speaker, representatives of Budute family, representatives of Agbesi family, honorable invited guests, all past NEC executives present, current executives of year and interest groups, all UMSU standing committee chairs and their members, Togbio Mamao here present, media representatives, general UMSU members and their guests, Ladies and gentlemen, 
It is my privilege and great pleasure on behalf of my executive body to welcome you here today. We are delighted to have you here to participate in this special occasion of the Kodote Agbisi Memorial Lecture. The purpose of this lecture, first of all, is to celebrate our founding fathers, and secondly, to evaluate the relevance of their vision to where we are as a union today. The fact that you sacrificed your time on a national holiday to be here serves as a reminder to us just how committed you are and how important our work is. We are dedicated to building a vibrant and an all-inclusive OMSU that, only serve, that not only serve us as a union, but most importantly, raise the standards of our beloved Maoli School. We are here today to do some introspection. The theme for the celebration is OMSU in Contemporary Times, the vision of our founding fathers. We are very honored to have lawyer Hilary Bedema, an astute lawyer, a woman, and human rights activist, and a passionate Maulian delivering the keynote address. We also have another stalwart Omsu, a two-time past president in the person of Reverend Moses Tete, serving as the chairman for the occasion. These important personalities will be formally introduced at the appropriate time. The chairman has already been introduced. So today, we want to ask ourselves, what role are we playing? Or let me rephrase that. What role am I playing as an individual in making sure that the Maoli that was left for me or the Maoli I attended is good for the generation yet unborn? That is the introspection we want to do here today. Uh, allow me finally to say a big thank you to all the committees that helped put this event together. The events committee did a marvelous job, as you can see. IT and Tech Support Committee, the team of researchers and writers that assisted the speaker, and our Publicity Committee. We also want to thank all our donors and volunteers, and all of you for being here. Aiko uh, Akpenami. God bless us all. You are welcome. Let's learn, make merry, have fun, and network. Umsu, head, heart, hand. Have you? Pride of Volta. Thank you. I'm about introducing someone you and I will agree should that deserves a standing ovation. We have amongst us one of the second batch of students who graduate from early school. Here, don't be shocked. Do not be shocked. Just get ready to be shocked. She's 80 years old. She deserves celebration already. <laughs> Her name is Mama Mrs. Jane Kwao. Wow. wow. A big round of applause. Now I can feel very comfortable. Now to all of you who are calling me Ben Davy, <laughs> you see your size. <laughs> to all of you who are calling me the Vioinia, the Vioinia, you see your size. <laughs> so because Mama is here, nobody please call me Ben Davy again. <laughs> Mama, we celebrate you. We are proud of you. God has been gracious. You look beautiful at 80. Oh, but you have to write a book. You have to write a book. One of the chapters to be how to look beautiful in 80. <laughs> Do you agree? Yeah. yeah, I'll buy 10 copies of that book already. All right. All right. How many will you buy? Yeah. You buy, yeah, you buy, someone's buying 100. The book is already sold out. So kindly go ahead and write. Another round of applause for our mom. God has been blessed. Okay, so in appreciation for the goodness of God over her life, 
There's a birthday party coming up. There's a birthday party coming up. So everybody's invited. The, the venue is, okay, Trasaco Valley, the, the Trasaco Valley Road, uh -huh. Kahaya, okay, number, I'll, I'll take the details again and come back. Yes, I'll take the details again and come back. But it's 120 cities per head. All who are interested, write this number down. Write this number down. 0244 Her name is Joyce. Okay. That's her telephone number. She has all the details. I will be there. I will be there. I want to go and learn how to look beautiful at 80. Yeah. So I'll see you at the, at the next birthday party. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll proceed. We we'll quickly want to invite Miss Esmi Ayele Ayayi, who is the head of our event team and the president of OMSU 1999. Please, I thought you were clapping for her. If you completed OMSU in 65, we are not intimidated because the mama is here. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Omsu in contemporary times, the vision of the, of the founding fathers. Okay. Our keynote speaker was in Maoli school in the year 1964 to 1971. She was a Nightingale House prefect. She is a lawyer, read law at the University of Ghana, LLB, Ghana School of Law, 46 years post call. She had a, her LLM at Georgetown University. She's a rector at the Law Institute, Laboni, Accra. She's a training specialist for human rights and gender equality an activist, an agenda consultant, a member of the UN Committee on the Convention for the Elimination of All Forms of Violence Against Women, SIDA, member and former chair. With a standing ovation, let's welcome lawyer Hilary Amishka Gedema. be seated. When um, Mama Jane Kwao is in the crowd, I have to be circumspect about how long I keep the crowd standing. But as for our MC, who thinks I dare not call him Badevi, <laughs> I will add Devi Amachu. <laughs> Atokoju. Because Mama Jane Kwao, as I would have said later in my speech anyway, was my Sunday school teacher in 1961. Give it up for her. Umsu in contemporary times, the vision of the founding fathers. Sir Chair, distinguished Tobio Nanao, Umsu executives, members of all the planning committees, my year group, which has come out in such numbers, 6971. Please. I can ask you to stand up. Yeah, 
Thank you. Please be seated. This is a great honor done to me because I give them such a hard time on the WhatsApp platform that it is a pleasure to see you out in such numbers. And to all others present, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Omsu and guests, you are most welcome and a very happy Independence Day. In 1952 and 54, two young men, among others, entered Maoli School, Maoli High School, as it was known then. Even then, Maoli was a high school, not a secondary school. In the early 60s, these two who entered Maoli school two years apart, one a budding architect, the other an aspiring lawyer, came together to birth a vision. We are gathered here, the first in a series of lectures, to celebrate them as emblematic of the vision their peers and successors fed into, supported, and nurtured. In doing so, we celebrate ourselves as followers, as a family who gave the vision form. Because without followers, vision is devoid of actualization. Chair, when we gather together, in a moonlit village ground. It is not because of the moon. Every man and woman can see the moon in their compound. We come together because it is good for kinsmen to do so. This is from Chinua Achebe in Things Fall Apart. Each one of us gathered here has the moonlight of vision, of success shining in our compounds but it is good for kinsmen and kinswomen to gather together to celebrate their own. And this is what we are doing here. May we therefore rise and observe a minute silence for architect Dan Neil Sidney Kodote and lawyer Nelson Avega Agbesi. And in doing so, for all members of the Maoli family who have played a part in the vision and have passed on into eternal rest. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their good deeds follow them. May we sit. Thank you. We are here today indeed because the good deeds of our seniors have followed them till today. Dan Podote graduated in 1956 as one of Maoli School's pioneers when Reverend Walter P. Trost was headmaster. He was assigned, as we've heard, to Washington House, not Lincoln House, <laughs> and became its house captain. We can forgive the Lincoln boys for their wanting a claim to his fame. <laughs> Washington House was the lower uh, level of, and then Lincoln was on top. So, this, and he became its house captain. This provided a platform for him to develop his leadership qualities. He later gained admission to the University of Science and Technology in 1959 to study architecture, a course he pursued with passion. In 1965, the UST produced the first batch of Ghanaian trained architects and architect Dan Podute received recognition as the best in his class. Nelson Agbesi, too, studied under the truth leadership, with whom he had a lifelong friendship. He was admitted to the University of Ghana in 1961 to study law. 
He graduated in 64 and proceeded to the Ghana Law School for his professional law course in 1965. He was called to the Ghana Bar as solicitor and barrister in October 1966. In honoring them, we will walk through how their worldview and vision was influenced by their early days in Maoli and the vision they imbibed from the founders of Maoli School and move on to the contemporary posturing of Omsu. Almost a decade after they entered Maoli School, the paths of these two young men were to cross again in making history. As part of the desire to continue in the Maoli family tradition, Dan Kodote, while studying at the University of Science and Technology, began mobilizing past Maoli students. Lawyer Agbesi at the, at the University of Ghana, Legon, also began organizing old Maulians. The two distinguished Maulians rallied old Maulians on the two campuses to visit Maoli school. Their aim then was to inspire and influence students to study diligently to enter universities and pursue higher education. I myself remember a time they came to the campus and they were a sight to behold. Even if you did not want to study, even if you were dodging classes, not turning in your assignment, this was a turning point. So the vision for OMSU began in the first half of the 1960s at the University of Science and Technology and the University of Ghana, Legon. Sir Isaac Newton, the famous English scientist, explained that his ideas were not solely his, but built on those who came before. If I have seen further, he said, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Who are the giants on whose shoulders the Umsu founding fathers stood? Inevitably, the founders of Maoli school loomed large, and this is the founders of Maoli school. All the, the elements of their vision were replicated in those of the Umsu founding fathers, giving full legitimacy to the Umsu founding fathers vision. Because like Newton, their vision was built on a solid and unassailable and proven vision. The vision was one that was grounded in faith. Maoli school, and we know the meaning of Maoli, Maoli, was nurtured in 1950, envisioned within the context of the Christian faith. Two reverend ministers, Reverend Trost and Reverend Baita, were Reverend Trost, who wrote about how Reverend Baita spoke with him about the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, Church's work in Ghana. And six months later, in February 1949, Reverend Baita wrote inviting Reverend Trost as they wanted an ordained minister for this position. When they received the approval by their mission board, they were commissioned to serve as ministries under the missionaries under the EP Church and for at least a decade, the faith was replicated. Maoli students taught Sunday school at Poji. And this is where I was the student of Mrs. Jane Kwao. I sat still. I studied my memory verses. I was a joy to teach. Was it not so? Thank you. In addition to Mrs. Jane Kwao, we had other teachers like Mrs. Emilia Ugwa, Ugwa, the Jakuma sisters, Mrs. Gladys Mensa. But my mother had a very special relationship with Mrs. Jane Kwao. Not only at Boji, but also they organized evangelical outreaches to the leprosarium and neighboring communities. In the 1960 anniversary launch speech, delivered by Dan Podute as guest speaker in 2010. He recalled the dream of the founding fathers was not just for the sake of having a school. The purpose, he said, was for a Christian institution 
whose primary purpose was to train Christian men and women to serve Christ in the many different walks of life, and pupils of all religions could be admitted or should be admitted to the schools. I go back into the history, and I will be doing so with some regularity to show how solid the vision of our founding fathers were. In fact, one of the greatest contributions of Senor Dan Polute was the original design of the Maoli School Chapel, now converted to a modern multi-purpose auditorium. For years, the model was displayed in the school library, and he was also a senior presbyter of the Presbyterian Church. The vision of the founding fathers was a vision of faith. The next characteristic of this vision was that it was carried by young persons. Reverend Truss was about 31 when he embraced the challenge thrown to him to head the school by Reverend Baita. He journeyed from sea from America, by sea from America with wife and two infants in tow. Similarly, seniors Dan Podote and Agbesi were undergraduates when they kickstarted the Omsu idea, which we are celebrating today. The lesson here in contemporary times is a strong message to today's youth. Do not undervalue your potential and innate challenges. After all, doesn't the book of Joel in the Bible say, young men will see visions? Aren't we told as young people to ask for the ancient paths when we have seen our vision, where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for our souls. Additionally, Maoli's name and motto were chosen by the students, and this again is a call to the youth. The vision involved great generosity and selfless sacrifice, also imbued from history. It cascaded from the Galala family, who donated the land on which the school stands, to Reverend Trost, who led who left a comfortable and secure job to launch into the unknown with the family. If we consider that today in Ghana, we resist transfers to parts of our own country, even our own hometowns, for reasons best known to ourselves, I will not hazard a guess here. Trost's account speaks of arriving in the country, his residence not being ready, in spite of assurances to the contrary, lived in Hope Boji Bremen Mission House, built in 1865. When their residence was eventually ready, they shared it with students who bathed and slept there, and the school's catering was done in the backyard. Again, this theme of generosity is evidenced in the life of our Omsu founding fathers. The Omsu National Secretariat is housed in Dan Podote's office building in Accra, rent-free, on prime property in Accra. The, co <laughs> the courtyard is used almost as of right for Omsu outdoor activities in Accra. We just go there and pitch camp. <laughs> Daring anybody who would challenge us in our father's house. The vision was one of pioneers, problem solvers, deadline deliverers, and innovators who paid it forward, defying naysayers. UMSU is the first ever old students association to be formed in Ghana. Testimony, yes. <laughs> Testimony to the fact that the duo, Agbesi Bodote, were no strangers to trailblazing work, having been pioneers of the inception of Maoli School. This loops back into the early years, and re as Reverend Trost reminiscences that the first year was not easy. They had to fetch waters and travel to Petwe Kali Mekpedze to fetch water in drums. So, what was his solution? And I am talking about people being problem solvers. Today, we would have set up a committee, a secretary, 
taken minutes, uh, allowances, lunch, and if the size of the chicken does not meet our expectation, we would complain? No. <laughs> Reverend Trost had a solution. He, con he ensured that there was the construction of an underground water collection storage system that would have been the envy of the Roman aqueduct designers. There were problems in solving, in sourcing foodstuff. Again, practical solution. Volunteer students were set to work at food production on campus and included in the kit list for all students was a hoe and cutlass. Those who came without these items, either because they took the requirement with levity or thought them unnecessary because they deemed it incompatible with academic endeavor, were sent home to get them. Every student had to plant a palm oil tree and a coconut tree and tend its uh, growth. Trost, leading by example, did the same. Additionally, other foods, foodstuffs were uh, cultivated. This vision blueprint, which became Maoli culture, was paid forward, inuring to the benefit of the school. When a food shortage caused many Ghanaian schools to close, Maoli was able to feed itself and stay open. In the early 90s, a national best farmer was an old Maoli girl, Gloria Dati. who was lauded for her yam multiplication techniques. Over the years, land was acquired in Sokode, Gary was processed there, and fast forward to this year, or last year, the vision is alive. My same friend, Arthur Chino Achebe says, until the lions learn to tell their own story, the tale of the hunt will be glorified perpetually by the hunter. My own year group, whose story I'm going to tell, has pledged 120 oil palm seedlings on two acres of school farm, yard, uh, farm land to be delivered this year once the modalities are finalized. <laughs> this year. We have imbibed this transgenerational vision. Umsu. Uh, Maoli, the founding fathers, then to us. And we say that we will do it, knowing that these trees will outlive all of us. What better testimony to a solid vision in transgenerational context. Dan, Podote, and Agbesi were also exposed to yet another example of pioneering work. Reverend Trost had rejected the standard dormitory beds for bunk beds that could easily be taken apart for cleaning and assembly to ensure a, a more free as floor space. He was criticized for this. But he says, those who criticized them for the farming, for the bunk beds, with all sorts of spurious reasons, came back to learn from Maoli. I say this because Dan Podote and Mr. Agbesi were witnesses to this phenomenon. And the OMSU they founded has been a blueprint for which other schools, many, many, many decades older than us, have copied and has become a national norm with no one giving credit to Maui. <clears throat> OMSU's founding fathers were seeped in pioneerism and they were no strangers to moving the margins having seen Maoli as a come-to place for innovation. The pioneering vision endured. It was Confucius who said, if your plan is for one year, plant rice. If it, was, it is for 10 years, plant trees. But if your plan is for 100 years, educate children. Omsu's heritage has achieved all three. And Dan Podote, this is an, what I know about him, has insisted on all his children and most of his younger siblings being educated in Maori. It is said that his car was even in the color of Umsu colors. 
they were achievers, these two we are celebrating today. Nelson Agbesi's legal career started in October 1966 as a junior practitioner, practitioner with Mrs. Lyons Koshiaiden and Co. Three years later, he joined Amei Chambers as a senior partner, where he spent 16 years with a brief gap of three years during which he pursued a political career. In 1989, Loyagbesi established his own law firm, and there will be no prizes for guessing the name of the firm, Afajato Chambers, the highest mountain peak in Ghana. Excellence and achievement. He contributed significantly to Mao's de Mali's development, serving as a board chair between 1969 and 79. In 1990, he was reappointed government representative on the school's board. Apart from chairing Maoli special occasions such as Honours Day, anniversary lecture held in the British Council for the school's 60th anniversary celebration in 2010, he led a committee to investigate the, low phase, the phase of low academic performance in Maoli. Dan Podote was the first architect to set up in private practice and was instrumental to the transformation of the Ghana Institute of Architects. He played several important roles in planning OMSU's 25th, 50th, and 60th anniversary celebrations. In 2002, he mounted an exhibition of all his architectural drawings, at least the very significant ones, on Corridor 3 to inspire students to study, study architecture. This was the same year he was honored by the Ghana Institute of Architects on its 50th anniversary as the number one architect in Ghana. He indeed has a number of Maoli architects to his name. These pioneers also had a human capital vision. In the, 2020, in the 2010 60th anniversary uh, launch, the guest speaker, Dan Podote, said, apart from instilling Christian values, the dream of Maoli's, Maoli, Maoli school's founding fathers was to train men and women to lead the Volta region and Ghana in its growth, thus feeding the vision of Maoli and Umsu into Ghana's human capital development. In the words of one of our favorite hymns, The Spacious Firmament on High, one of the lines says, that God has published to every land the work of an almighty hand. Maoli's human capital resource is in every single part of the earth. If a Maulian is not there, the place is not inhabited. They were also leaders in family unity and they were peacemakers. Maoli school was conceptualized as one big family. There were, the sense of belonging was reflected in the communal life that existed on the campus. Reverend Trost had known every student by name and sought the welfare of all. He said, during the vacation, they loaded trucks with as many students as they could carry and visited their homes to see their towns and meet their families. That is why Maoli has house mothers and house fathers. My dear mommy here was also a house mother. As against house mistresses and masters in other schools. Madame Fatih Paul, the first girls prefect who entered Maoli school in 1959, recounts how, coming from the northern region, she received so much care, love, and pampering from both students and lecturers and teachers, and the joie de vivre of Maoli school from the beginning was characterized by love and care for everyone. Umsu's founding fathers continued in exactly the same tradition. According to Mr. Kodote, the Umsu vision was to keep the family together, fostering unity among all students of Maoli, so that as one, they could support the school and inspire current students to ensure standards were maintained. We recall how in the late 60s, lawyer Agbesi came all the way from Accra in the nick of time to settle the dispute which settled the peace and security of the school. 
Dan Kondote himself paid countless visits just to inspire staff and students. He would join them at Sunday worship whenever he was in Ho and teach the young men how to wear the church cloth. Despite his lofty achievements, in Umsu's nascent days, as we have heard from the chair, he would sleep in now Lincoln House on a bunk bed <laughs> rather than in his comfortable house in Ho. His humility endeared him very highly. Maoli is known for jokes and anecdotes. At least your little time here, uh, you must have yes, seen that. Lord, many of these anecdotes are apocryphal in origin. But never mind, they make good storytelling and we like them. Both, both these gentlemen had a keen and unique sense of humor. Agbesi was ebullient with his endless jokes and stories. Dan Podote had a dead pan wit system, just up by his trademark, Angloga Genwa Son. So, Chair, to this point, I have shown how the founding fathers of Umsu had their vision drawn from the founding fathers of Maori. This was a vision of faith, youth, generosity, dogged pioneering and grit, achievers and excellence, human capital concerns, and family unity and peacemaking. But let us proceed to maybe the not so good news from the founding fathers, which we need to, 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 to tell because this gap has to be interrogated. The founding fathers of Mauli, not of Umsu. A father cannot be a father without a mother. True or false? I don't think the biology books have changed since I was a general science student. So there has been the danger of the feminine narratives being lost or subsumed in the dominant male discourse of the vision. This is a particular risk with co-educational institutions as feminine roles and articulations do not always occur in conventional historical recording formats. In Reverend Trost's words, when he was replying to Reverend Baita, he said, I quote, so we wrote back and said we would come with our two children, son Paul, aged two and a half, and daughter Jean, aged one. We then received approval by our mission board and were commissioned to serve as missionaries, plural, under the EP church. Who are the we and are that Reverend Trust constantly refers to? Looking at context, it is obvious to me that it was, it was Mrs. Ruth Trust and they were joint missionaries. But literature on Mrs. Trust is totally non-existent. Mrs. Trust and I had very interesting conversations. One of them was about her experience with childbirth in Ho. I once asked my dear senior mentor and friend, Senior Beba Kumensa, in an unrelated discussion, why, instead of Priscilla House, we didn't have a Ruth House. I was just interrogating the names of the girls' houses. Ruth, who was a progenitor of Jesus, he replied to me that Reverend Trust was against anything that would appear to be self-glorifying. Is that not the conversation we had, Senor Vibakumensa, His Excellency? Thank you. This imbalance is structurally and optically evident from the architecture of the early days. We had four boys' houses and one girl's house. That meant for every four boys, one girl was expected to enter my school. <laughs> Gladly today, the statistics are different. We have almost 4,000, precisely 3,965 total. 
The males are 2,239, 56.9%, and the females are 1,726, 43.5%. But I am still not happy. Why isn't it 50-50? Nevertheless, I take some little comfort in the names of the girls' houses, and they give us hope for a place in the vision story. Mary Slezer for women's rights and the abolition of inimical cultural practices, and Priscilla, which education, again, I was given by Senor Beba Kumensa, for the role of religion, and particularly she was thought to be the writer of Hebrews, from Genesis to the empty tomb, and everything in between, often suppressed by theologians. At the last end, at the empty tomb, it was women who were there. The males were nowhere to be found. Permit me, Mr. Chair, to exercise bias in relation to Nightingale House, because that gives me hope. Florence Nightingale, yes, Nightingale girls, please, 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 please. Agri boys, you can join us. Florence Nightingale was not only a nurse, but a manager and trainer of nurses. She was a pioneer in statistics. She represented her analyses in graph graphical form to ease drawing conclusions and actionables from data. But this fact, I'm sure many of you are hearing for the first time today. But what it tells me is that the role of women, important in caregiving roles as it is, does not derogate from their ability to engage in what is known as male-dominated areas, make history and chart courses. More fascinating for me, for Florence Nightingale, is that she said a nurse must use her brain, her heart, and her hands. Does that sound familiar? Yes. That was her nursing philosophy. And she said those were what was, were essential to create healing environments to care for a patient's body, mind, and spirit. She also, for me, epitomizes the leading role played by women in the healthcare system which has not always been acknowledged, even in the COVID pandemic. Now a picture is worth a thousand words. When we look at our crest, do I have mine here? Yes. It symbolizes what we all know, the head, the heart, and the hand. And all that I've said before can easily fit in head, heart, hand. I do not have to give a class one uh, exercise in that one. We know what the head is for, the heart, the hand, and the colors. The green represents the youthfulness and energy to work. So the youth, you are there. And the, the agricultural potential of Ghana, to make Ghana rich, self-sufficient. And the gold is our natural resources. And as I said, they symbol, symbolize all that has gone before. I have heard that there is no lazy Maulian. Right. And I would challenge anybody who is bold enough to do so to tell me that he or she is the lazy Maulian and the exception to the rule. Now, all this is merged into our national human capital vision. Again, in the 60th anniversary launch, Dan Podote said the vision of UMSU was to train men and women to lead the Volta region in Ghana in its growth, thus feeding the Maoli and UMSU vision into Ghana's human capital development. Rudyard Kipling renders it poetically in his hymn land of our birth. And in the last stanza, 
He calls upon us to take our place as men and women with our race and pledge to serve our motherland for whose dear sake our fathers died with our heads, hearts, and hands in the years to be. Now, where are we in contemporary times? Having lauded the work of our founding fathers and forebears for nurturing Umsu into an indispensable asset for Maoli, we see that the Bible declares that every vision is for an appointed time. And it was the poet Victor Hugo, the French poet, who declared nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. The vision of the Umsu founding fathers for subsequent generations is captured in Article 2 of our Constitution as first to provide a forum in which the interest in Maoli school shall be promoted among old students, wherever they may be. May I emphasize that it is old students, not old boys. Occasionally, I hear people refer to Maoli as an old boys association. No, the girls are here. Girls are here. It is to provide an opportunity for old students to make positive contributions. And now I'm talking about uh, OMSU in contemporary times. And thanks to Dan Podote and Nelson Agbesi, we have great contributions of the OMSU to the school from the humble beginnings we saw. And groups are actually fighting for space to lend support. As we say among my people, that's all. And we have outdone ourselves under this head. In respect of uh, uh, infrastructure, we have rehabilitated the white block, uh, the 17 unit block, the school sick bay, headmaster's house, Aku house, corridor three phase lift, old uh, home science lab into an ultra modern computer lab. In terms of furniture and equipment, the number of computers donated is endless. I could not even take a tally. And I thank the UMSU North America for providing such uh, rich information. <laughs> Donation of microscopes, books, classroom furniture, fax machines, several batches of computers, uh, medical assorted medications through uh, dedicated doctors, and I must, I must say, here in Ghana, I know of a group of pharmacists who regularly donate to the sick bay. We must thank them. <laughs> Omsu, again, credit to our forebears, have sponsored former board chairs, key officials, and dedicated teachers to congresses in Chicago. Several cash donations have been made. We are always doing it. The website, workshops and building capacity, capacity building uh, initiatives, incentive schemes, the school gate, water projects, risograph, the computer lab initially donated by uh, Germany, even branding materials, paraphernalia. How would all this have been achieved without a strong and unified and motivated UMSU? We are to promote networking and friendship and thereby bind old students into unified fellowship. This is the third point for the social well-being of all members. We have done so in our homecomings, congresses, branches, the year groups, and um, unthinkable in times past. And we have groupings according to professions and locations all over the country. And we do reach out to one another. We endeavor to uphold the image of Maoli School through the scope of alumni influence in all endeavors in Ghana, finance, governance, peacekeeping, and so on. And then the last one is to recognize and acknowledge deserving members in various fields of endeavor. And this is exactly what we are doing here today. As we grow, as we move on, inevitably there are cracks in the vision. The vision cracks depend on who you are and from what point you are seeing the cracks in the vision. For some of us, it is probably the total and reckless disregard for the English language, which in our days would have sent students 
hiding under tables and shouting bullet. For others, it's the loss of the basketball and tennis fields and the softer skills of art. Others, it is the voluntary spirit. When Reverend Trost came for the 50th anniversary, he asked a question that jolted me. He asked, doesn't anyone greet here anymore? Apparently, several students had walked by him without greeting him. Unthinkable in his day. I understood it as a call for conversation, an intergenerational dialogue, a sifting, and an affirmation of the positive Maoli traditional values. A call to look at where we slipped, not where we fell. There are issues around our mandates. These are some of our challenges and the tensions between alumni students, alumni parents, government, church. And this is an uncomfortable conversation that must be brokered. A school that began with 19 boys, which increased to 34 in the same year, up to 1,300 in 2010, is now almost 4,000 students. And infrastructure has not increased in the same dimension. We have a mega school for which alumni are being called on constantly through a revolving door of alumni contributions to contribute to the infrastructural challenges, including dining hall in batches. We need also to maintain what we have. And Dr. Afenya in Umsu, North America, has described a maintenance committee. We need a new focus, gingered by COVID, on health and hygiene and overcrowding in the school facilities. I do not want to go into detail here. You know what I'm talking about. It is not something we should be speaking about in public. We also will look at COVID, need to look at COVID and its impact on fundraising. We need to also assess the move from boarding to default day schooling. And something that is dear to my heart and flummoxes me is the science school focus. We recall Maoli School was built to have a strong focus on science. Not surprisingly, the iconic two-story science block when constructed was the tallest building in Ho. Yes. And it could be seen from far, from my house behind the stadium, we could see the science block. The science take-up is about 31% average of student population. We want to interrogate whether this is good enough or it needs improvement. And of course, the girls are underrepresented. However, I found a very interesting fact. In the third year home economics class, there is one boy against 50 girls. Please give him a prize. We need to look when we talk about a school that is based, that was built on science foundations at the performance in Nash, the national maths and science quiz. In no way am I denigrating the arts. I am a proud arts scholar with philosophy to boot because people don't respect philosophy. They say, what, I, what is that? Yes, this is that, yes. My own committee, the CEDAW committee at the UN, has cautioned against STEM enrollment being the sole benchmark for commendable academic performance. It calls on states to eliminate gender stereotypes and structural barriers to the enrollment of girls in non-traditional fields of education, such as STEM, as well as in the digital field. And, but at the same time, they are to ensure that it's not at the expense of arts and social sciences, and that science courses do not become a vector or a proxy for indirect discrimination or a standard of intelligence. It is no coincidence that OMSU was founded by a science and an arts scholar. There is the need to close the generation gap and gender gap. 
and deliberateness is needed. Let's think about creative ways of merging with the subsequent uh, generations. There are countless examples, and we do not have to reinvent the wheel in Maoli. Picking intergenerational year groups and putting them together. Those who graduated 10 years before, those who graduated 20 years, those who graduated maybe 30 years, and having them come together. Our question is, will the vision thrive in contemporary times? It depends on us. And our willingness to recognize emerging issues and make our education fit for purpose. Climate change, environment, the corporate capture, and leverage the digital age and emotional intelligence, social skills, and social fitness. Just yesterday, I saw that I think the CEO of VRA talked about the role of uh, the millennials, millennials in the world of work and the importance of networking. Let me digress and tell a little story about social skills. We all in Maoli, as a matter of course, in our time, learned how to use cutlery. If you didn't, you picked it up almost immediately. We learned table manners. We knew you didn't have to stretch over your plate to pick uh, something from the other side. I don't know how this skill, very important, social skills, and I'm not only talking about food, I'm talking about social skills in general, how this is being um, replicated. The story is that I had the occasion to interview a very promising candidate among all the candidates. He was head and shoulders, there was no contest. So my principal said, we should take him out to lunch. When we got to lunch and the drinks order was asked, the first thing he asked for lunchtime was a bottle, large bottle of beer. Sensing the impending, because as our guest, we asked him first. Sensing the impending danger that was looming. When the menu came, I took the opportunity to quickly order. And I thought he would follow my example. A simple meal. When the menu was passed to him, he ordered lobster and something. The most expensive meal on the menu. Now, you order lobster. You're not an expert in eating lobster in public. By the time the lobster was dissected with a knife, parts of it had become missiles and projectiles. My promising candidate, which, whom I, have, I had hoped very sincerely to work with, lost the job to lobster and beer. <laughs> we need to look at these issues in the global and look at citizenship for a global world, not only in the hard issues, but in the soft issues. And in I am surprised that the chair hasn't asked me a guy a blogger. Maglo. My imam let talk blog. I had also here a book project. So great minds. I don't see I'm not saying my mind is as great as yours, but I'm looking at it from the perspective of a Maui mind, not a Hillary mind. Probably think alike. The Bible tells us to write down the vision and make it plain on tablets so a herald will run with it. We need to write down the vision on tablets and we need the heralds to run with the vision. And the heralds are the youth. To my credit, in school, I was also a 220-yard sprinter relay race. 
And I gave a good account of myself for very many years. My son, when he was playing football with neighbors, would ask me to come and join his team. <laughs> he says it's very true. <laughs> Everybody wanted Kofi's mother on their team. When I became a grandmother, I was always winning the grandma's race. But I cannot run as a herald with this vision. The vision is for the youth. Run with the vision of writing the memory on a tablet. Because the bluntest pencil is better than the sharpest memory. Run with the vision. Write down everything. Interview people. And I had already told my team, who did the research for me for this paper, to widen the boundaries of the research to be able to get material for a book. Don't forget the apoc apocryphal events. Don't forget the pictures and things when they come to you. In fact, my crack research team comprises John Sotovo. Are you here, John? Thank you, John. <laughs> Justice Gave, Justice, are you here? Amazing. Salam Ababio. He's here. Thank you. Your own good self, Chief Butolizi. For institutional memory, we had His Excellency, Senior Beba Kumensa, who has been a long standing friend, long standing friend, a mentor, and a family friend. Senior Bebaku freely gave off his time. He says, if you have any more questions, write them down, send them by email, and let's have time to discuss. Senior Bebaku, we are coming back. <laughs> Senior Fred Boachi, thank you. Sister Jane Kwao, thank you. Afo Moses Tete, Madam Fati Paul, all of them gave us anecdotes and pictures. Do the same for this book and you'll be acknowledged. We have re historians, writers, as we've seen with um, Senior Bwachi, and archivists, even in my own 6971 year group. And they are the greatest encouragers you will get anywhere on earth. Sister Mary, you remember I told you about this book project about two years ago. But somehow, we never really got to broaching it with a year group. I re-emphasize this and say if we have achieved nothing in this lecture, let the book come out. Memory is a form of knowledge. As Ani Ernan, the winner of the 2022 Nobel Prize for Literature says, I will also mention the remarks by the Krachi Rua Nanampra Besemuna the third. At, sorry, second, oh sorry, most greatest apologies. Who said at the 60th anniversary that we are gathered here this evening to remember a story about our lifetime. It is a story of hard work and occasional rough times at Adakru Square, but mostly of good times. It is a story about the people who helped us to make us what we are here today. It is a story of benefiting from opportunities created by the sacrifices of those who went before us. Above all, it is a story of how we can be of help to those following or will follow us. Dan Podote said it is our, our duty to protect and project Maoli School for future generations. This book must be read by all. Sir Chair, let me um, maybe narrate my last um, story about the importance of the vision, writing it down, reading it and utilizing it. On a safari, the tour guide told the tourists that they may come across a lion, wild animals, but they should remain calm. The same information was given to them in the brochure. 
true to form on the safari. Here came a ferocious um, lion charging at them. One of the tourists started panicking. Lion, ee! Tour guide said, please remain calm. You know what I told you. And you know what is in the brochure. The terrified tourist said, you have read the brochure. I have read the brochure. But has the lion read the brochure? <laughs> this is a book that lions, lionesses, and cubs must read to project the uncommon passion that our distinguished forebears had for Maoli school. Up to their deathbed, Maoli was on their mind. Lawyer Agbisi dropped in on the national executive meeting and, and advised them on the way forward for, uh, for the union. Little did they know he was bidding them farewell. Dan Podote even wished Maoli be his final resting place. You may rise and dance for a while. You have been seated for a while. This is truly a great revival. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> wow, the torch has been lit. Who are the bearers of the torch now? I was very much touched by a few lines in there. Looking at when these great men started their contribution towards this great history we are celebrating, it wa they weren't all fulfilled in life before they started it, right from university school days. So all of us here and those who are even not here, those who are watching us live, I think you are in your prime to make your contribution to a greater history moving forward. Mrs. Gbedema Hillary, God bless you. God bless you so much. And the research team, God bless you. God bless you. To me, the summary all is that Echiala Joji, Ewami Bluga, Miadakma, Kaka 
Mishoba Ohanwo wala wazama. I remember Chala Jojo Hohe. I climb you blue gay. Kaka now war, nano wazama. Now climb beyond attack KJOG. Thank you so much, uh, keynote speaker. And I like the gender, the gender points. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I know Mrs. Nyamo over there will be saying, yes, yes, yes. God bless you. We would invite one of our very own to give us some sweet words that he has woven together like the proverbial spider. His name is Elfo Losu. If you are here, rise, let's celebrate your creativity. Once again, Molly School is not only a science school, but has produced beautiful arts as well. Is he here? <laughs> Bye bye to yes one to take a job back bo. Yo woro taji pore. Afika di e wo ina. Oni le to di pore, di pore e wo ina. Oni le to ni ba, ani ba e wo no na lo. Bora ma bye bye to yes one to take a job back bo re. Yo woro taji pore. Afika di e wo ina. I go, I go, I go. I want this words of mine to live the test of all and sundry. Mokbokbo, Jima Gadelo Fuo, Eye Nachi Jima Dedio, Mau Anna Aduasima Bolo, Eye Mana Achagba Ayunubia Fuo. Alessi ka gbe me nyawo sese hala ma kude wa gbe me fu o me o eye zi alessi nele agbe kola nunye fe game ma va yo o kebun ti jo fa vi ko ina fa nunye fe game me yi na ode o ti jo fa vi ko emi afa lo nunye fe game me yi na ode o ti jo fa vi Kwe miya falo. Ma u sogbo le sa ma u ga kata kiti kata adang woto za do ngini ase ngini afo si nyana takba chuchon la matu asike u anye ji wo kpala kpala kofa la. Eyo wana wa kofa fa jijo kule jijemen. You may be emotionally distressed, psychologically dispossessed and physically depressed. But there is no permanent conviction. People were once like you doubting every fiber of their eminence. See, everyone spotted from a root in the village. Even the city we see today was once a cottage for primitive souls. Yes, people cast fertilizers at you. They dumped you as a village dirty creature because they were privileged to be born and bred in cities. They say you are wedded to death and your body aroma is as fat and a disgrace to humanity. See, but to me, you are my morning sunshine, my afternoon smile, and my evening drag. They had silver spoons in their mouth. And that made them believe that you are a coward of infinitesimal value. But trust me completely that you may be enjoying a better life much more than many of them. They ready can laugh at you, says you are brief when you pass, and price your blemishes to bar. But don't be depressed and distressed. Live each day as a blessing and devil yourself as the chess queen, a village lady who is beauty itself. For them, they bath in cosmetics to liken themselves to African beauties, but you are different and unique. You wear self-confidence and humility, and your beauty baffles the peacock. Mokpopo, Khojigbodi, Doji, Eye Jijem, Asu Asiwo. But Alex Nyale Popom, Abe Atisi, Ufo Sefo Ponyak, Ponyak, Ntole, Kheke Ame Godola, Dumoto, Dekaya, Nela, Da. Ah! Angono ngi ni ngono. Anyichi, Gere, Jiweji. Vava, Tugbele, Tugbeme. But I listen to the clam that I beck a list like a clam and if it's a beck a clam, we are no caca, caco, coco. You are that wonderful creature, well crafted by supernatural architecture. You are that wondrous angel in picture, that sunflower beautifying the walls of agriculture. A flowery plant gives you credence to horticulture, and your body features are evidence to floriculture. 
and your stability is towards others proves monoculture. <laughs> Worry not, my two fear. I stand with my words so true. I inscribe them with my tears, engrave them with my blood, and I will write your name on the tables of my heart. If need be, I will walk on broken bottles, hawk my feet on its spiral apples, and use the oozing blood to sign the bond for our love before the eyes that which has tears. Well, Macho levo toto si galato, e ye makpeden wo ko usika chikuzela, maku tivivisile abe a havivi ene, e ye mako de se gafa festimale abe muti fafa ene, be wa fa abe li havivi si fa ene, e ye duko ano. Let these words of my mouth and the smile you are done on your lips create the perfect rhythm of our heartbeat. Oh, forever together, let us sway left and right, dance before Mr. and Mrs. Maulis. Akpenami, before I, before I go, let us all use Koba, dial star 365 hatch and follow the step. Trust me, you'll be fine. The emperor, the conqueror, the champion, the lion is here. Thank you so much, Uncle Osu. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So we'll proceed. We will take some brief statements from the family of Podote. And to help us do that is Nelson Podote, who is one of the sons, the brother, sorry, the brothers of. Okay, so whilst he, he finds his way here, permission has been sought, Mr. Chair. Um, our very own Nana Boache Mensa and Ambassador Mebaku Mensa would want to seek permission to attend another function which they have been invited to. So if you would permit them, whilst this is going on, they would want to beg leave. Thank you very much. But don't forget, he has a book. So all of us, I'm sure some of the book is on display. Uh, did you bring some of the book? Oh, okay, so the book is not yours, the book is for, all right, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Um, it is for us an elation when we were informed that there was going to be an honor of a member of our family and that we should show our presence. And that the notification tailored on uh, Fodan, as it was so affectionately called, was no, was very, we thought was very appropriate and therefore we had no words to mince with it. Because we know what Fudan has done in the area of his association with Mali School, where he spent much of his time, which he would have shared with us with Mali School instead. So when he died and Mali School showed the presence rather greatly at his funeral, we thought that was all we we're going to have about Fodan and Maoli School. We had not believed that this would happen. So we want to say we are very, very thankful and grateful to the honor of his memory. 
I stand here, Nelson Kodute, in the name of our head of family, Colonel uh, Wanyu Te, retired, who for special reasons cannot be among us this afternoon, but he sends his good tidings and blessings to the whole city. And as you can see, I'm standing here with Caroline, that is the third child of Fudan's four children. She says there's a popular song for Dan Sings and he wants to share with us. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Can I see members here who are related to a Fudan, who have had a personal relationship with you? Please rise. Please rise. Family members, friends, people he has motivated, people he has inspired. He used to go around to even friends' homes and he would talk to their children like, which school are you going to? Which school do you want to go to? I want to introduce to you Maoli school. That is who he was. And when he died in his will, he wrote it specifically in his will that Omsu Secretariat will always be housed in his office at Ring Road. And he said, that is forever until Omsu decides otherwise. That is how much he loved Maoli. I'm grateful and I just want to, just for us to remember him through one of his songs, Anglo Genoa. Anybody know that song here? Oh, very few hands. Okay. All right. So we will sing Anglo Gagenwa in honor of the original Anglo Gagenwa. Hallelujah. Don't mind me. I'm a minister, so the hallelujahs just roll off. <laughs> so, Genwa, Anglo Gagenwa, Anglo Gagenwa, transferred to Pando. Genwa, Anglo Gagenwa, Anglo Gagenwa, transferred to Pando. Driver Leget Gun, huh? Oh, Genwa crossing the road, crossing the road, crossing the road. Driver le gets down Genwa for to me le plo. So doti la so Genwa. Angloga Genwa. Angloga Genwa. Transfer to Bando. And from the original Angloga Genwa's family. And loved ones to you, we say thank you. So to continue, the lot of the things we had planned to say had already been said by Madame. So there's no need repeating them because we are satisfied. And the way he cashed it was in the best of forms, the best of ways. So we can say thank you to her again for all that we want to say. Uh, being a member of the family, where he came from, who begat him, and etc., I believe that he has said it all. So we would end up here. But I am not uh, uh, an old Maolian. Uh, I'm from the best school called Audu Basagani School. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's all right. Uh, but it is for you to learn. It is for you to learn that uh, Molly took care of her own. For most of us, we saw Molly as the birthing for our six forms and others. But we want to say that to he who much is given, much is also expected. So because we went to our school. In 1972, they played a football match in the whole sports stadium and I was school beat Maoli. <laughs> so, so I changed, I, cha I changed my school and, and, and that was it. So we'd like to say thank you very much. We appreciate this and we hope that uh, more will go because Maoli is Ho and Ho is Maoli. Yeah. And we are also big in Ho, so that is it. Thank you very much. <laughs> No comments, no comments. <laughs>
<laughs> so, I mean, uh, Cheeto people, those guys are the Cheeto there. <laughs> no comments, no comments. Maybe the only thing I like about Chito is some uh, fufu on the on the way. <laughs> but apart from that, I don't see any other thing. Ah, do you see any school there? Ah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Ah. Oh, I will scope our stop. Okay. Ah. Senior, next time don't come here like that. <laughs> On that note, we want to invite the family of Agbesi to also share some few remarks. That will be done by Justice Gaver, if you are here. A round of applause for him as he comes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Um, Mr. Chairman, Senior Hillary, Mr. President, Fellow Malians, this is, um, for me, this is a bit emotional because I stand here in uh, two roles. First, as a member of the Agbesi family, because Agbesi was my father. I mean, the one I've known as a father since I was a child. And that is because... He was he's married or he was married to my aunt. The lady sitting there is my aunt. I mean, not like far away aunt. This is, this is my mother's sister. And these were the people who brought us up. So when Mr. President asked that I should be a member of the committee that would put together the history and the facts and all that, I told him, for me, this is duty. It is duty. I can't thank him enough. I can't thank Sister Hillary enough. Uh, Reverend Tete, we were at your place. Mr. Boachi gave us a lot of time. We spoke to Madame Fati Paul. She's out there in Tamale. And for me, hers was the most powerful of all the stories that we had. I can't go into that now. I'll never finish. <laughs> I'll really never finish. These two gentlemen were so passionate about Mali, it was sometimes difficult to understand. And uh, even though I grew up in his home and all that, I didn't see this really well until we started putting this whole lecture thing together. Then it really hit me. Now, let me just give you two, two simple facts about how Mr. Agbesi was very passionate about Mali. His home in Liatiwati is built and designed the way our administration block is built in Mali. It is sitting on a well with all the rainwater, rain gutters and everything, sending water directly into the well. Yeah. The second thing I want to say has to do with how even after he had, you know, finished his, well, you never really finish your service with Maoli, but I remember in the days when there was this Maoli list serve, email had just come up. And yeah, he was somebody who was constantly current. So he was monitoring the email, activities on the email. And there were times he would be sitting there looking at the, you know, his laptop and he'd be shouting and screaming, what is wrong with you people? You, you know, he was really that passionate. He really wanted to see Mali progress. And it is therefore with a lot of humility and immense pride that I stand here today, on, first on behalf of the family, to say thank you to all of you who made this possible. Um, of course, the current administration took it up, but I must mention that the previous administration whom you took over from also suggested it. Well, they didn't suggest it, they actually initiated, but for some reason, 
it didn't happen. So I want to thank all of you. And for Senior Hillary, I, I don't know. I don't know how to, to express <laughs> all the material we give you and the way you put it together so marvelously. It's, it's, it's really, really humbled me. It's really humbled me. So I want to thank all of you and pray for their souls to rest in perfect peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senior. Okay. Um, my earlier senior, did you see this one? He didn't mention anything. No, no bus stop was mentioned. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Marvelous. <laughs> you know just how to give it to people like that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you heard our keynote speaker reemphasize the fact that we need to keep writing. I mean, if you're not writing, we need to start writing. And I think that one of the things that I think is a big gap is there's nothing to refer to, especially because we all didn't go to Molly School at the same time. You go for a short period, two years, three years. Those who went six years and seven years, fine. And your experience is so different from my experience. The climate is not the same, but if we can start documenting and then there's updates, there's updates, we, are, we can always refer back to the vision. So on that note, we want to celebrate those who have started writing. Is that okay? Okay, so that they would also motivate us to also start writing. Before they come, oh, the DJ, if you are there, just give us three minutes of a very nice music whilst we get some books ready for a very short review. All right, DJ, are you ready? Some very soft music for now. Okay, while the DJ gets ready, can I... Once again, invite all of you to the 80th birthday celebration of our mama. This Saturday, 11th of March, I will be there. I won't miss it for anything. It's 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. The time is good for me. So I will, yeah. I will only do some uh, hot water breakfast with lime inside and launch myself for the afternoon. Okay, and there's an, there's an amount. The rate is 120 CDs. Yes, 120 CDs only. That one, thanks to the economy, I can afford. Okay, so the venue, please, is close to or opposite Jerry Rollins' residence in East Legon. The place is Kahaya Restaurant. It's on the way to Chasako Valley. If you are missing, Google Mac can help you. If you, you are not Google Map friendly, kindly call Joyce Yevu 0244-291967-120 CDs. Okay, the number again, 0244-291967, Joyce is her name. 120 CDs, Saturday afternoon, birthday party. I can't wait already. All right.
All right, DJ, thank you so much. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So, we would invite the author of, yes, Mr. Fred Boachi. Is that right? Is that, the, is that, the, is that the, yeah, Fred Boachi? Okay. He has started already what we are about to start, the rest of us. So he will just take some three minutes excerpts of his book. Put your hands together for him, please. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I have had only one senior here this afternoon. I'm of class of 1960. Nana is class of 1959. I was the sports prefect for Maoli School in 1962, that's sixth form. I played hockey, basketball, athletics was tops, and the house was Lincoln House. I wish to add, I, I, I wish, I wish, I wish to add how Nightingale House and Slezor House were fighting each other to be rooting for Lincoln House. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, let me say that, please, um, our two very seniors that we are celebrating today. Mr. Dante and lawyer Agbesi, I have had the privilege of working with them. Not only that, I met them at school at Maui. Uh, Mr. Agbesi was my senior in common hall at the University of Ghana. And when he was the regional minister in Volta region, I was the regional economic planning officer. So I knew the energy with which he worked in the region at the time. And Mr. Tay was also in a number of our projects in the Volta region. And again, I saw the energy with which our seniors worked professionally. Now, about this book, what a reviewer said was that this book will add to the stock of knowledge on educational institutions building in Ghana, with specific reference to the Volta region and Chito in particular. A lot Chito Awudome. <laughs> A lot of people say that this book is carrying a wrong title. It says, A Community in Search of Education, Chito, 1886 to 1963. People may think the whole thing is on Chitu, but it covers all parts of Everland, Transvolta Togoland, and Volta region. From that time, Everland, no, not only that, German Togoland from 1884, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, German Togoland, through Transvolta Togoland after the First World War, then Volta regime at independence of Ghana. And the book talks about school, start of schools in the Gold Coast, formal education in the Gold Coast in the 19th century. In Everland, again from 1847 onwards. Then, secondary school education, which was started, who knows, in Volta region or in TVT, who knows, the first secondary school in the Volta region. Angloga, Zion College, Zikua, Zion College of West Africa, Maoli School or second school, they are all in this book. Bishop Herman, the start of all those 
10 schools before your school was started. <laughs> the 10 schools down to Herbs, the start of all these schools, Maori school, the start of Maori school, Auntie Hillary has said a lot. We have captured a lot in this book as well. How our school was started, it's all here and up to our school. There's a full chapter on your school and a full chapter on the founding fathers. So ladies and gentlemen, I will urge you, it's a very useful book, how Asante War came into Everland, how the First World War was fought in Everland, how Everland became a German territory. After the First World War, it became Transwater Togoland Trusteeship Land by the United Nations before independence of, of Ghana. I thank you very much, please. The book is on the stand over there. One hundred Ghana cities. A few copies are on display at the exhibition stand. So um, he'll be available to sign your books for you. Yes, please. Okay. Our keynote speaker has gotten her copy already. Yes. Uh, our time is up. I would have started the auction right now. Uh, Omsi President has also gotten another. The time is up. The time is up. But like by now, yeah, tongue, yeah, we will sell right now. All right. So the next book is on our very own Walter Blegge. And um, it will be reviewed by Agli Kwesi, Mr. Agli Kwesi. A round of applause. Yes. So five minutes of a very short and brief review. Oh, Kwasi Agbli. Thank you so much, Mom. Okay. Mr. Chair, Sister Hillary, fellow Maulians, it's a pleasure and an honor for me to uh, speak about this book, make a quick review of this book, written by an old student who entered Maoli in 1950, a classmate of uh, Mr. Kudote, and later became the headmaster of Maoli School, a famous Pan-Africanist, musician, composer, historian, educator, and a public servant and a statesman, named Walter Komla Blege from Peje. Quickly, I must also mention that I was in Lincoln House. <laughs> and I was the entertainment prefect as well from uh, 76, 77. In his book, which is actually his memoirs, and as Sister Hillary said, we should all write. And we are grateful that Fujako and others have blazed the trail. And uh, Mr. Blegger wrote his search for identity from a village boy from Peje to becoming headmaster of Maoli School, a minister, and a statesman. One thing that we've all had is the faith in which students of Maoli were grounded and the role the Evangelical Presbyterian Church played in molding our lives. The book speaks exactly to a lot of what we have heard today, how Maoli molded a little boy from PJ to attain the highest heights he could as a human being and as a Ghanaian. It has anecdotes right from the village, his career as an educator in the various schools he taught, becoming a minister, setting up and working to set up the Center for National Culture, becoming the first president of the EP University, the first uh, chancellor, 
and working on a lot of the hymns, the new hymn book that we have in the EP Church, uh, is one of his many works. The book is 50 Cities, is authentic story of a little boy's life, molded and nurtured by Maoli. It's 50 Cities, and it's available for sale in the balcony. We'll urge everyone to get a copy. As sister said, we have to, the written book is the best memory we can have. So let's all get a copy for our children and for generations to come. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, senior. Thank you. Um, in the year 2000, when we're um, doing, uh, celebrating the 50th anniversary, I was chief of SAD then, so a couple of the programs that were at line for the celebration, I was part of the planning and implement, uh, part of it as well. I'm just reading the pre um, preface of uh, that is book, and he captured that all this book here was inspired by a lecture he gave during the 50th anniversary. Let me just read that line for you. He says that my involvement in a number of closely related events over the past many years partly influenced the decision to undertake this project. The first event was in 2001 when I was invited by the headmaster of Morley School, who, Mr. Winfred Bonsi, to deliver part of the Reverend Paul Walter Trost Memorial Lectures as one of the activities of the Golden Jubilee celebration of the school. The topic I selected was preparation for leadership, a quest for a worthy citizenship. Beautiful. After 20 years, that inspiration has produced results. It's my prayer that after today's ignition, 10 years, five years, 20 years from now, we should see a lot more results coming out of this lecture. If you will do same, put your hands together for yourself. On, the, on that note, we want to invite the chairperson to give his closing remarks, and then we'll bring our memorial lecture to a close. Thank you very much. I thought you were going to clap. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. After I finished my first term as president of OMSU, four years, we went to a Congress in Maui School to elect a new executive. And for some reason, there were there was quite a bit of division, you know, uh, and there was a lot of arguments and stuff. Then Hillary came over to me and said, "Fumosi, you see what is going on? Come back, come back and take the thing." I couldn't refuse. How do, I, how do you refuse Hillary a request? So I said, okay, I have worked hard, but I'm coming back. So I came back. I think Jojo Fore and John Chotobo, they were all there. So I had another term. So I served Mali for close to 10 years as a national president. <laughs> and uh, so those of you who are, who are wondering why she delivered this speech with such passion, that passion has always been there. Even in those days, she would intervene, she would talk, she would hold meetings with people, oh, uh -huh. and then she would come and say, oh, yes, they've agreed, they'll do this. <laughs> yes, Hillary. Hillary was powerful and did a lot for Obsu. <laughs> Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Hillary. And it's amazing. Usaji Vokwa Nkuma says something. He said he's not an African because he was born in Africa, but because Africa was born in him, right? Do you remember that one? Yes. Let me give you an example. When I finished O-Levels, Mali School, we went on an excursion, and we went all over the place, Achimota, GSTS. Then we ended up in uh, Pearson. And the colors were the same. You can't believe it. Exactly the same. The buildings, architecture, everything was the same. 
And I was stunned. I said, how can this be? So I went to the headmaster's office. I said, I want to come to this school. So, oh, where are you from? Maoli. Oh, no problem. If it's Maoli, no problem. <laughs> we even make you take four subjects. You know that we took three, right? Say, so you will take four. What I mean is that Maoli had preceded me. They are such a high image of the school, the ethical behavior and everything. It's amazing. And when I went there, I noticed the difference. It was a boys' school. I'm not playing down primary college. But then you are going to the learning hall, and this guy was carrying a spoon in his pocket, at the back pocket. You see what I mean? <laughs> and when I went to Marley School, remember, it was his hazel, hazel. You had to come two weeks ahead of time, and they'll coach you how to hold the fork. <laughs> yes. So I was stunned. How can you have a secondary school like this? And they had nothing. They knew anything, nothing about etiquette. It was terrible. Okay. So it's amazing what the school builds in you. And I'm saying that even after leaving the school and went going around the world, when I came back, I was regional president for primary college for more than 12 years. And I'm now the life president of Greater Accra. You see? Yes. And you can do anything. I will build a dormitory block all by ourselves. No money from anybody. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I'm very glad we have this today. And we also started, of course, the, the, these uh, memorial lectures. At that time, it was called uh, celebratory because the people were alive and we're doing it. Now we've done the 24th one just last uh, November. So we can do it. Let's move forward and do it. Let me just say a few words, then I'll close, okay? Now, what did the guest speaker, what did he say about the vision? Everything was about the vision. How to carry the vision, right? With passion. Move forward with it. Yes, that's what she was talking about. And she was talking about the possibility of losing the vision. Let's be up and doing. These are the things she said. These are built on faith, generosity. They had a pioneering spirit. Yes, it was so evident in those two guys that there was nothing would stop them to be there and to sleep in a dormitory and to go to a bathroom and bath and to go and eat in a dining hall, everything. And they, they had a investment in capital. They train people like myself and most of you to carry the torch forward. There was a family unity and peacemaking. So I want to end here by saying that it's been fantastic having this session. But it should not stop here. Hillary, they should stop, okay? Push them, huh? If they worry, tell me I'll push them, okay? <laughs> And let's move forward. Because there's so much to do. There's so much to do. Our vision precedes us. You go to a certain precept today, you see, I'm from Mali. Hey, you're from Mali school? Who? What can we do for you? Yes, they admire us. They know we have vision. We, have, we are morally upright. We have etiquette. We have all this already in place. So on that note, I want to thank everybody. I know there will be a lot of thanks, but... I'm glad you are here, and I met all of you. So God with you all. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, some very important announcements, and then we can proceed. All right, please, apart from the birthday party on Saturday, which I cannot overemphasize, May Day, 1st of May, the leadership is planning some memorial bobo at Omsu Secretariat. So lock that date down. So we'll spend the whole day at the Secretariat just interacting and having fun. Uh, Omsu Legon would want to express warm appreciations to all their sponsors um, who made it possible for them to be here. Um, and then they, they did a career fair too, right? Uh -huh. So they had some appreciations to give. And they said they have a citation to present on the May Day event. So 
kindly take note of that. We'll have Umsu Legon also joining us. Before we go, we we'll would invite the president to also give us if there's any other further information. Then we'll take the closing, um, the vote of thanks and pray. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just um, one announcement. Uh, my predecessor started a memorandum of understanding with the church. Uh, that, under that MOU has been finalized, and God willing, next week on Thursday, we'll be signing that at the AP Church. We'll be signing that at the EP Church headquarters in Ho. Uh, we want to make a big fanfare of it uh, because we want everybody to be a witness to it. So as many Maolians as can show up there, you are invited. Thank you. All right. Um, if you hear your car number, you kindly move to your car and see to what's happening there. GT 8191-16. GT 8191-16. It's a white, uh, look like a Kia 4x4. So kindly get to your car quickly. All right. So we would want to say a very big thank you to everybody that was here, especially the one to help us do the vote of thanks is Dillis Akoche. Is she here? Okay. Dillis is coming. Wow. 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 Dillis, which house were you in? Did you say Snicker or Sleza? I would. Oh, it should have been Slezala. It gives me immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this against event. First and foremost, I'd like to thank God Almighty for bringing us all here and making this event a memorable one. I'd like to thank our chairperson, the guest speaker, who honored this function. Sorry, the guest speakers who are this function with the inspirational talks. I also thank the events committee, the IT tech support, media and publicity committee, the team of researchers for the memorial lecture, old Mali students and affiliate seated here who came from far and near, and those listening to us from afar. It was a great time with you all. Thank you. Lincoln Slezza. Lincoln Slezza. You remember our song, right? Lincoln Fue. Lincoln Fue. Yeah, and it's less uh, for yeah, but yeah, way. No, no. A round of applause for the Blue House. Thank, Thank you very much, well, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. We'll take the closing prayer. After that, we'll take the Maoli yell. All right? And then this is how we want to exit. We'll exit through the right gate because of the arrangement we've changed outside. So, um, we want to exit peacefully. We would first invite, uh, allow the high table to go, then our invited families from uh, Bolote and um, Agbesi's family will follow suit. And then we would also go in a particular order. Please listen to the MC during the order. Okay, thank you very much. We would invite our very reverend to help us with a closing prayer. After that, Dr. Fori will lead us in the yell. I like his style. Thank you. It is said that the best is reserved last. So after all the other houses have spoken, the nobles are here. I should tell them, eh? I said the nobles are here. 
So, oh. <laughs> President want to talk. President, this one there. Trust is far away. You know, if you are mentioning the houses, first is Woba. Lincoln can come in that order, but trust, you are far away. <laughs> Shall we please be on our feet? The headmaster I met is a caller. He has a particular song that when we come on campus fresh, he will sing. And when we are going, also, we will sing to remind us. And the song goes, that one when we are going, but when you are come to the school, you tell no strong do ma wo no strong do no strong do ma wo no strong do ma leji de po ma wo no strong do de de ma tengu ye o ma leji de po ma wo no strong do de de ma tengu ye o. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are with us because the name of our school tells us that you are a God that exists. You have shown yourself great among us this very afternoon that all that we have asked of you, you have done it even beyond our imagination. Father, we pray that as your word declared that we should not be the hearer but the doers. May the all that we have heard today energize us to do that which we ought to do, to lift the image of the school and bring those, oh God, that are coming also to attain the height and go beyond the one that we have reached. Give us the wisdom and the strength to be able to do. You brought us safely. We pray for traveling mercy. That when we get to our various destinations, glory and honor will be given unto your name. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. It. Amen. Amen. Please stay on your feet, please. Molly Villa here. Oh. Hey, Chime Bento. Molly saw her away. Molly saw her away. Me from Kodomasa, me from Kodomasa, me from Kodomasa. Yeah. Mauli saw her way. Mauli saw her way. Mi pon koro masa, mi pon koro masa, mi pon koro masa. Yeah. Mi echo vota tu tu tu. Anasta le nasi. Chichano le nasi. Afuya le namo. I'll take it again. I'll take it again. I'll take it again. Mauli saw her away. 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 I 
family and Agbesi's family, you can kindly find your way to the exit. Thank you. Orderly for us. Uh, whilst they are doing that, all those from the first batch up to 1979 year group, you can also find your way. We are doing so so that we see our chichis from the chichis. From the very first batch to 1979 year group. Uh -huh. You can also go. Aha, uh -huh. these are our very senior most senior most. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Once again, a very big thank you to all of you for making it. It has been a very wonderful afternoon. Well spent in your presence. My name is Isaac Jahine, Omsu 2000. <laughs> Shout out to all Omsu 2000 people in the house. Shout out to all those I met in school from 1998 to 2000. Yes. All right. Now those from 1980 to 1990, kindly rise up and make it to the exit. 1980 to 1990 year group, kindly rise up and make it to the exit. Oh, one more. <laughs> And make sure, make sure I look good on TV. Oh. Eh? You have interview. You have interview. Do. So wait. Make it not go. Ah, okay, okay. All right. Now, 1991 to 2000 year group.